Hey guys, um, my name is Lisa for those of you who don't know and I make weekly videos about foster care. Let's so make sure to subscribe if you are not already. Um, in the last video, I had shared um, two things um, this past month that have um, been really difficult um, to walk through. And I really wasn't able um, to even share what I'm about to share right now um, fully in the last week's video. Um, but now I can share a little bit more, and so I am going to share one of those really hard things. So our three foster kids have uh, been with us for 19 months, and they have had pretty regular twice a week uh, visits with bio parents. Uh, currently, they are on visit, and this is the first visit in six weeks. Um, normally, I uh, create this content and I edit this content during their visits um, or even during the kids' nap times, but with summer vacation and the oldest uh, being up during the nap times, I was spending time with her. So that is another reason why there was such a gap in our videos. So I want to talk about kind of when policy and emotions clash and kind of just what we have been walking through um, the last couple of weeks. So it was six weeks ago today that I had taken our middle D on a foster daughter date. So I had realized at that point that we needed to create some one-on-one um, -on -one time with just me and her because um, with her sister home from school and when she would wake up from naps, she wouldn't have any like one-on-one -on -one time like we normally would. We just needed to have some time away. So I had to plan this um, time and I was um, at Chick-fil-A uh, when I got this call that I'm about to tell you about. We had just finished eating and thankfully the play area was actually opened and so she was playing and I got a call from the caseworker. Now whenever the caseworker calls, I pretty much always answer if I see it, um, no matter what's going on. So I answer and she's like, hey, um, do you have like a moment to talk? Like can you step out in the garage, you know, into your little office space because she knows that's where I do my phone calls a lot of times. I can't step away but I can kind of, I can just, you know, listen what's going on. So she patched the visit supervisor in and we had a three-way phone call. Um, well, quickly I realized I needed to step out um, because I needed to do some talking and I could still keep an eye on her but like try to be fully engaged um, with this phone call in the middle of Chick-fil-A. So um, this visit supervisor we have had um, for nine months and she has become like family to us. Um, she is someone uh, who I would easily invite to Thanksgiving meal. Um, she, the, the kids absolutely adore her and see her as a really um, source of someone that they can confide in. I'm gonna get really emotional talking about this. Um, the visit supervisor said that she needed to step down. Okay, you know, not too much of a surprise, like things change and she has been our fourth um, visit supervisor, uh, but she has been the one that we've been with the longest. The kids had already talked with her a lot in the car about like her house and she loves gardening and the oldest A, she loves gardening. And they have been talking about like wanting to go to her house and see all of her flowers and about sleeping over and you know, all of these things. Like, like I said, she has become like family. You remember when I told you the kids' bucket list? Well, going to her house um, was on their summer bucket list, and so I was trying to see if that's something that, like you know we could do and just go to her house. Um, so her stepping down, I was like, you know, they kind of you know it might be a little bit easier now to be able to communicate with her and not have as many like hurdles um, to cross over. Uh, but um, the next sentence is what kind of threw me um, when the caseworker was like, "Lisa, you're not going to be able." Um, to have communication with her and I was like okay so like what do you mean like like not at all or like I can like still send her like pictures and like updates of the kids or like I can like call her for advice or or like what like and she's like no not at all um like she's someone that like I totally have confided in um went stuff with the case and she has been uh, such a great person and so then to a sudden realize that this relationship, that you see something, someone twice a week, that you've built this foundation with, and you're not gonna be able to see them anymore or talk to them, is just like random. You're like, but wait, but she's she's like a trusted adult. Like the kids like really love her. And uh, she's like, I'm sorry for legal reasons, you will not be able to keep in touch with her. So 
I didn't want to accept that answer. Um, so I continued to talk to the casework about it. I talked to our foster care specialist. Uh, Peter and I even contacted an attorney and pretty much got the same answer um, that we uh, cannot communicate with her. While I was editing, I realized I forgot to share one of the incredible God moments that happened uh, while I was in Chick-fil-A uh, getting that call. Uh, so at this point, I was crying when I was like, what do you mean? <laughs> we can't continue talking with her. And so I had um, turned uh, my back towards the, the play area so Dee would not see me crying. And as I looked up, here comes walking towards me uh, one of our friends. And this was someone that I had been in a small group with previously. Um, and she happens to be a social worker herself. And she just mouthed the words, are you okay? And I was like, no. So I'm like there getting this news. I'm a mess. It's all happening in the middle of Chick-fil-A. Uh, so thankfully I went to my friend's table, uh, my bag still towards the play area. And you know, she was just keeping an eye on D. Um, as I um, get a tissue and I'm just trying to process all this information. It's just such an incredible uh, God moment. Um, I really wasn't able to share much with my friend um, there, but I later texted her and I just said, you know, I have no idea um, how much it meant to look up and then to see you there um, in that moment. And she said, you know, that is just a reminder of how much, um, you know, God cares for you and God cares for these kids. And just a reminder that through everything, you know, he is going to provide for them. So that was such um, an encouragement uh, for me. That was Friday when I got the call and Monday was gonna be technically her last day. She wasn't gonna do visit that day, but she was going um, to come and say goodbye to the kids. So I only had that weekend to communicate with her. So I, you know, sent her like, a thank you for everything that she's done for us um, and just you know wrote her some words of encouragement things that she can hang on to um, and then she came on Monday and I was really really dreading that um, in fact the day previous on Sunday when I was like writing my email uh, to her and just overwhelmed with the fact that I can't talk to this person who has become such a source of encouragement for, for me personally um, and also for the kids. I wept on the floor in our bathroom because the reason I was doing it privately was because uh, we were told that we weren't even supposed to tell the kids that this was happening. They wanted her to be the first one to tell, which I do not like keeping secrets from the kids. So like the whole weekend, I was just this emotional mess, but like couldn't really tell the kids, you know, why. Um, so she came over on Monday and it did not go at all um, how I expected it to be. Because at one point, A looks at her and was like, well, you know, like, can't we like still see you? And that was a moment to like basically let her know some of the reasons and that no, she couldn't. Um, but instead I felt like false hope was given um, and also the reason that she kind of said that she was stepping down from her role wasn't complete truth. And I know it was to try to protect the kids, but unfortunately it really did the opposite. Um, and we were kind of left to pick up the pieces. Uh, so the kids know from us, like they can always expect complete honesty. We are all about trust. And yes, there are certain things we can't tell the kids, um, but what we can tell them, we want to be able to. And so, uh, the way that it was kind of described to them, it almost, at least to, to the oldest, it felt like abandonment. Like, wait a second, like she said like we're her favorite kids. She said that like she was always gonna be there for us. Um, which probably, you know, things that she probably shouldn't have said, but she did. And it's because she completely meant it in the time. But like I said, Policy and emotion, you can't always have them go hand in hand when it comes to foster care. Just A really felt like abandoned and it was like, what? I don't understand. Um, and the, oh, the supervisor, she gave the kids all gifts and gave us a gift, which is really nice. Actually, I'll show it to you. It is um, Be Still 
and know that I'm God. You can see it kind of matches our other decor as well. So uh, that was just such a nice touch. And that actually is one of my favorite verses. The funny thing is I had a sign already for many years that says the exact same thing that is also um, on the mantle next to it. So, hey, I need that reminder constantly to be still um, and know that God, he is in control um, through this all. So one of the gifts that she gave to A was a uh, notebook. And A actually drew this picture, covering up um, the supervisor's name, but it says, you know, I love Miss, and then her name, and then it shows our house um, with the three kids under Lisa and Peter's roof, and shows that this supervisor is no longer part of our house and separated out. And it shows um, A weeping. So that night, uh, A ended up, uh, like 20 minutes after she was in bed, we hear her weeping and sobbing. And um, she is not one to actually normally cry. Um, she likes to keep everything inside. And so um, just hearing her bawling, uh, you know, Peter went up and for 40 minutes um, spent time, you know, comforting her. Um, he was up there while I was um, writing a message out to the kids' therapists and all of that, just how they were, you know, processing. That's a lot of times what I do in the evenings um, is I will message, you know, therapists if there was something going on in the day and how the kids are doing. So uh, communication takes a lot of time, but it is one of the reasons why we have a really good team um, because I make sure to have that time to uh, communicate with them what is going on um, with the kids. A finally was able to calm down and you know, she slept and you know, we were all like grieving. Like this is, it's the weirdest loss. It's like there's a loss of somebody who's not actually dead, but we can't communicate with. So whenever there's permanency um, for these kids, whether it's reunification or adoption, um, at that point, Peter and I could, you know, reach out to her um, as a friend. And so I told her, I was like, please don't ever change your number or email address because that's all I got on you. And she's like, you as well. I was like, I know. Uh, so hopefully, you know, at some point then we can, um, you know, communicate, but I do not know like when that permanency will be. And so that is very hard to have this unknown. And so these last six weeks um, without a visit supervisor has been difficult. Uh, when that visit supervisor left six weeks ago on Monday, we were actually told that there was a new visit supervisor that was found. And so we were like, great. And so we thought visits would start, but then her um, transportation wasn't large enough for the kids. That's what we were told. And then there was a second person, and then a third person, and then a fourth person, for whatever reason, didn't work out. And finally, someone worked out, and I did have a chance um, to communicate with her, and I really do like her. We talked for about an hour the other day, and I think she's gonna be a great fit um, for these kids. But it doesn't make it any easier um, that I am no longer allowed um, to, uh, speak with the previous, oh, I just got a text actually um, from the new visit supervisor that the kids have arrived. That's sweet. I don't think I've ever um, actually gotten a text before um, to say that they've arrived. So that is super nice. Um, a lot of times they text, you know, when they're coming home. So there you go. Like I already really like her. Like she's going to be a good fit for the kids. She is, however, driving an hour and 40 minutes to get to our house. One way, one way she is driving that far to come to us. Then she needs to drive to go see parents and then come back and then go back to her house. So she is driving a little over four hours for a two and a half visit one time a week and a three hour visit another time a week. So there's five and a half hour totals between two visits and she's gonna be driving that far. So it's just insane um, if you want to be business supervisor after everything I've just said, there's definitely a, a need um, for for them and we're very thankful um, for her. You know, so today I was just having a really hard time emotionally, just, you know, that visits were picking back up and that it wasn't going to be the previous business supervisor coming and seeing and it just, you know, brought up all of these emotions again, um, how much I really, um, I'm gonna miss that relationship. Now, like I said, this new business supervisor, she seems 
great and I'm so excited um, for the kids so they can you know be able to see their parents again and get on that a normal schedule of visits twice per week but it doesn't make it any easier um, to have to say uh, goodbye. And it was about two weeks ago um, when the oldest, um, she looked at me and you know she was uh, really quiet and I said, what are you thinking about? And you know she's saying that she missed um, her parents, but she also really missed the visit supervisor. And I said, I know, um, I miss her a lot too. And it just, she's like, well, can we call her? I said to her that, no, we cannot. And she's like, why not? And I was like, I know, it really stinks. I have a really hard time with it as well. And I can just, you know, be honest um, with the kids and let them know that like, this is hard and I'm sorry, um, but we can't. It was actually the week of her birthday party um, when the visit supervisor had stepped down and she had been planning to come to her birthday party and let her know that unfortunately, you know, she wouldn't be able to. But that was really hard um, as well because A was really looking forward to, you know, having her there. So it's definitely, um, I think been harder um, for her to process because she is older. I think she fully understands more the impact of what it means when you can't see somebody. It's frustrating when in the DCS's policy, like it says, like they want to help kids build trust-based relationships. And then here was an amazing trust-based relationship, but then because she is now no longer party to the case, we can't communicate with her anymore. So there you go, that is one of two really hard things that we walked through this past month. And the second thing I will be making a video about, most likely at some point, but it probably won't be for a couple of weeks um, until we get some complete answers on things. So thanks for watching, make sure to subscribe if you are not already, and hopefully the next video will be a little bit more upbeat and fun. <laughs> See you guys, bye.